Hi, I'm Sam Shaltain. This is Follow the Leader, and we're here in frigid Philadelphia to attend an education conference. Let's be honest, most conferences are boring. They take place in some sterile hotel ballroom, and you spend most of your time listening passively while someone else talks. But Educon, which is run by teachers, parents, and students, has a do-it-yourself vibe. It meets in a school, and its guiding assumption is that everyone has something important to share. Welcome to Educon. Welcome to the Saturday kickoff. In the seven years it's been around, Educon has become a must-attend event, both in person and online, for folks who are thinking about the future of education. So I came not to follow one leader, but a whole lot of them. I figured I'd find some tech-loving optimists, but that's not exactly what happened. I feel like in some ways things are pretty grim. I think that the economy is grim. I think the environment is grim. Um, I think that in some ways you could think of the future being pretty grim for humankind. But on the other hand, I feel like if you're involved with in education, you are an optimist because you believe we can always get better. We can always learn and we can always improve. Okay, so there's room for improvement. But surely, I assumed, a group of people concerned with the future of education would be gaga over technology. Wrong again. I think technology can sometimes dumb down the person. It can be really beneficial, but it can also dumb down a person. I learn more, you know, flipping the page of a book than I do, you know, going to the next slide on, a, you know, PowerPoint. The more I listened, the more interesting things got. I think a lot of the innovations are happening around um, us having new ways of thinking about how people learn who people are, how does identity interact with what you're able to do in school, in society, and how do we have a responsibility to help mediate that, how to help dismantle oppression and other things that are, are holding people back. In dozens of breakout sessions, people came together to explore new ideas about teaching and learning. This is the boundless classroom. Let's see what it looks like. The first step in redesigning a classroom is to discard the notion that it has to be a classroom. When we're talking about a, a boundless environment, we're talking about unique opportunities to learn in new ways that technology allows and, and enables. Uh, when, when I was in school, to get, to get access to content and understanding and expertise, I had to go to school to listen to a teacher. Now, literally, students have in the palm of their hand all that information that I had to go to school for. So, so that is a completely disruptive kind of condition for schools to, to, to work through. When we say boundless, what does that mean to you? The notion of boundless. I feel like I'm bound by all kinds of ed policy choices and you know, limitations that kind of keep me from doing anything boundless in my room. When I come to Educon and I listen to people say, well, if teachers would just simply embrace change or if teachers just could, you know, reimagine their classrooms, it's a whole lot more complicated than that. You know, reimagining your classroom in a state where the high stakes accountability model says that I'm going to be evaluated by nothing more than my kids' ability to regurgitate knowledge is, it's difficult. I'm, I'm your neighborhood pessimist, so. <laughs> Buy a five dollar raffle ticket. <laughs> Buy a ticket. Buy a ticket. <laughs> so what is step one? Chris Lehman is the principal at Science Leadership Academy in Philly and one of Educon's founders. I think that we're going to see a million trends and I think you're going to see online and this and that and blended and, and all of the buzzwords that we hear. But what I hope we sort of coalesce around is the idea is that what schools can become are the places we come together to learn. And however that manifests, this notion of a community of learners who care enough for one another to learn with and from each other, that's the direction I hope we go in. We want to cover the content. Mm -hmm. What I began to realize is that the folks who attend Educon are less concerned with what technology can do for the classroom and more concerned with what adults can do for young people. Helping learners think about their own thinking is, is critical. Uh, how do you learn best and how do you know how you learn best? We can give kids academic choices uh, in terms of what they do, how they do it, who they do it with, what tools they have access to. We can give kids those choices all day long and think that we're doing education right or better. 
But if we're missing that piece of having the kids reflect on those choices and how those choices help them learn, we're not making sure their next choice is better. But this is the way you change minds and hearts. Being able to have that discussion and constantly trying to struggle with it. Things go my way. Um, I would hope that we would become more project-based, uh, having multiple entry points for learning and trying to get education to be more about what kids can do instead of what they can't do um, and then try to create equitable situations for all so it feels like everybody has a chance to be able to do uh, the same things that everybody else can even if it's in their in a different space but when I'm, I'm working with a student who's having a really hard time I'm what about, I'm nervous that, about well, is our country's one-size-fits-all way of thinking about everything so it comes down as a mandate, it comes down as a policy, it comes down, you must do this, you must teach this way, you must teach these things. And so my hope is, is that there's access for all and choice for all. And what I think will probably happen is there'll be access for all and um, very little choice. Choice for some. Choice for some. If I was the boss, I would eliminate access as the reason for not using technology. Like, that wouldn't be the reason. Um, the reason for not using technology would be because there's a better way to do it. And so that, and that, that's always the guiding force. What is the absolute best way to learn this? It's no secret that most of our national conversations about education tend to happen without including the voices of classroom teachers. But the folks who attend Educon are apt to change that. There are amazing things going on with children every day in everybody's classroom. There are stunningly fantastic work happening and it stays locked inside these rooms in places away from the public and it makes us vulnerable for um, people to say that we're not good at it and we're letting children down. The one thing that teachers can do very proactively is share everywhere possible the positive things that are happening with our kids in our local communities, digitally, push this information out. I believe strongly that this can um, really change the way we talk about education, but we have to be willing to open up our doors enough to say, look at this cool stuff kids are doing. So what exactly is Educon? It's not just a meeting, it's a network of support 24-7, 365. And for a growing number of educators, it's a global tribe whose members can sustain one another's work. In some of the teaching places that I've been, my, my positions, I was the only one doing this kind of work. And being the, the lone wolf or the, you know, the crazy person that does project-based learning gets a little old. And when you find people that can support what you value in teaching and learning, you know works with kids, it, it helps you move through those spaces much more easily. I think that sometimes we only view change as happening when it's radical and transformative and revolutionary. And I don't think we do a good, I would always notice the small changes that we make. And I think that there's a lot of really small changes that come out of this. Whether you learn new things, whether you unlearn things, whether you meet new people or um, just change your perspective a little bit. I think that people are changed. Empowerment means taking our content. My and my learning you. space has certainly changed, and that's exciting and it's fun. It's neat to to be able to make some of those evolutionary changes in my own practice. So there's reasons to be optimistic because there's good thinking around education uh, that happens at places like Educon. Next January, Educon will be right when and where it's always been at a school in Philadelphia on the weekend before the Super Bowl. Or anywhere else in the world you happen to be online. One way or another, maybe I'll see you there.